brothers and sisters, welcome to the program Into the Chambers of the King. I am your host, uh, Prophetess Purity Muni, and my guest today is Pastor Oru. Welcome, Pastor Oru. Thank you. And uh, we are delighted to be with you tonight, and we are going to be discussing the topic on the faithfulness of God. And just before we start, we are going to start with a scripture in uh, second, uh, First Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. And it's just telling us a little bit about uh, the revelation of God, because God was telling me that he is faithful. You know, in the book of Revelation, when God comes down, he comes down and, and, and uh, there's a horse, and on that horse, the leader, which, who is Jesus Christ, of all the two names that could have been picked to describe this writer, the ones that were picked were one, he's faithful and he is true. And also in the book of, uh, when we, we, we read about Jesus, the Bible says that he's good. So God is good and he's faithful and he's true. And so let us read uh, First Corinthians 2. 9 and 10, uh, we, can, yeah, we can start uh, from verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I like that part because I, I came to learn that uh, Satan might know the Bible, but he does not have the revelation. The revelation can only be given by the Holy Spirit. And so that's the first thing that uh, for you to see the faithfulness of God, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to come and give you the revelation of his word. Uh, verse 9 and 10 is one of the scriptures we are going to focus on. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor uh, have entered into the heart of man, the things that, which God has prepared for those who love him. So this is quoting from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. It's saying that, yes, the eye has not seen, nor the ear had. So the things of God in the Old Covenant, they were hidden. Because like I'm saying, uh, the Bible, the, even Jesus said, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us get the revelation of his word. And so in, I, li I really like um, 1 Corinthians uh, yeah, to, like there, 2, 2, 9, where the Bible says that now those things that were hidden in the Old Testament, now we are in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit has come. And just before we read verse 10, let us like, jump right to the book of John a little bit, and John 16, and we will see why the Holy Spirit came. Because uh, the Bible says, uh, in, let's, let's go there, John, uh, John 16, 13. Uh, the Bible says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Not some of it, but all of it. Uh, for he will, not, uh, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his, um, he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So when the, this is a promise that Jesus is telling the disciples. When the Holy Spirit has come, he is the one who guides us into all truth. Um, the reason why we have to go to the revelation is because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you cannot walk uh, and encounter the faithful God if, even if, uh, if you have no revelation. If we just know about the letter, because Jesus said the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. If you just know the word as an instrument to beat people up, then it won't work for you. So let me finish there. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the spirit is the one who searches the deep things of God, and he comes and reveals them and tells you what to do. So for you to encounter the faithful God, there's some things that you need to hear. There's some things that you need to do. And so we're going to go to Pastor Oru to just tell us about the revelation God has given her about uh, how to walk and encounter the faithful God. Yes, we have to encounter the faithful God because um, 
if we are not led by God in all things that we do, we are just like uh, babies. The Bible records that we are sons and daughters when we are led by the Spirit, in, that we are just like babies, children. But in order to be sons and daughters, like you, can give, you cannot give the key of your car to a five-year-old. It will cause a lot of damage. So there are so many things we cannot gain access to if we are not led by the Spirit. And the only way to be led by the Spirit, you cannot be led if you cannot hear. The way to hear is to have a good relationship with God. It's just like husband and wife. Husband and a wife, they have to talk to each other. They have to love each other. There has to be a relationship. There has to be intimacy. It's during intimacy that you get fruit. And when you relate with God, God, prayer is not when you just come to God and you just talk and do everything that you want to say and you move away. No, it's a relationship. And it's, as you talk to God, then you will grow him. You will hear him talking back to you. You will hear him. That's how to hear God and get revelation. And there are so many ways God can talk to us as we know. But in order, the main basis of hearing God is from having a good relationship with him. You cannot be a wife and just talk what you want to your husband, blah, blah, blow, blow, and the husband has nothing to say back. No, it is a relationship. When you talk to God, God will talk to you. Mm -hmm. And then you have to keep being faithful. Because uh, the Bible says in the, in the book of Luke 11, uh, you, you knock, uh, you, you, you ask, and it shall be given. You seek, and you will find. And, and you ask. So you are asking, you are seeking, you are knocking. You are asking. But most of us, uh, like, uh, we are going to go deeper into this and, and talk about the violent prayer. But most of us, our asking is maybe when we are driving to work and we have five minutes to ask God for something, and we have turned God into almost like a slot machine where we just put in uh, five minutes and expect the answer to come in. And if it doesn't come in, it come out as fast. We have become so... Uh, so fast of a generation that we do not spend time, uh, quality time. We don't set side apart. We don't set time apart to spend with God. So where we are asking, where we are seeking, where we are knocking. Yes, God has promised that whatever He has, the mysteries of the kingdom, they have been revealed to us by His Spirit. But sometimes we wait until Sunday. Uh, to go and listen to the preacher. And if he goes before two hours, after two hours, we are like, oh, I have a more important appointment to be with than being here in the house of God. So we have turned into a place where we are not spending quality time with God. And uh, I feel like that's what God is urging us to do. Uh, whatever it is we want to see, wherever area we want to see his faithfulness, we have to spend time and quality time with the Almighty God. Yes, it is very important. Jesus Christ did not die because of religion. Jesus Christ died for a relationship. He loves us so much, even when we were yet sinner. He died for us. He wants a relationship. He's in cultivating that relationship. That is when we bear fruit. We have to take time and spend time with God. And we have to trust him. He said, he that comes to me must believe. We have to believe whenever we go to him that he's there and expect him. There's manifestation. Expectation is the mother of manifestation. When you expect God to talk to you, he will really indeed talk to you. And uh, I pray that each and every one of us will hear God because it's like a deaf and a blind walking in the world when you cannot hear or see what God is doing. When we, you are not sure if you are in his will or if you are just doing your own thing, it's very paramount for every Christian to be able to hear from God and to be able to see what God is showing. Yeah, so tell us sometimes, uh, Pastor Oru, where, uh, you have been pastoring for quite some time. 
So tell us sometimes where you spend time with God that you have seen him become faithful in your life. Yes, I've had experiences. Experiences that I got in a situation. Actually, my children did. Got to a situation whereby nobody but God can only deliver. And when I was um, asking God, God, how could this have happened? You told me to move and come to this city. And I mean, this city, the first thing that will happen are bad news about my two children. God, I could, and I heard him clearly. I spent time with him. I did not first go crying. I did not first go seeking what the world would say. I went to the Lord himself. I went to him and said, God, how could this happen? What, 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 where is your glory in this situation? What do you want to accomplish by allowing this to happen? And I heard God told me, praise me. And I was wondering, how could I praise you in this kind of a mess that my children are in? There's nothing to... He said, praise me. And I praised him all through. And he got me out of that situation. He got my children out of that situation. God is faithful. If we can spend time with him and see where he's going to or what, look, no matter what situation you are going through, God is aware. God knows every detail of it. He knows. When Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were put inside that fire that had been turned seven times higher, God was looking at them. He knew what they had done. But God wanted a glory out of this to show that he's God. And the fire of God, I want to say, the fire of God does not burn us. He burns whatever is impure. He makes us pure. When that fire of God came, that fire consumed the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. And that fire broke the rope that was holding the three men together. It did not burn them. The Bible records that it did, their ear did not even sing. They were not harmed at all. Yes, when you can hear from God, and they told Nebuchadnezzar before going in that fire that we will not bow to your God. If our God cannot deliver us, we are not going to bow. That is how strong our faith can be. That no matter what we are going through, after we have heard God, it doesn't matter anymore. The, what, what matters is to hear where God is in the situation and where we are in God's will in this situation. The same thing with Daniel. Daniel was um, to be put in the lion's den because he was praying. He did, he, because he heard from God, he opened the windows towards Jerusalem. He let them see him. I am still praying. And when it happened uh, that they put him in the lion's den, he wasn't fearful. God could have shut up the mouth of the lion. God is very sovereign. But I know that Daniel has heard. And Daniel has so much faith that my God will, is able to deliver me. At the end of the day, God shut up the mouth of the lion. That is the God that we serve. The God that wants to have heard from him. Nothing matters anymore. When you hear from God, it doesn't matter what people are saying. When you have the fear of the Lord, you won't have fear of any situation or fear of anybody anymore. Yes. Yeah, and what I see in those examples, uh, Pastor Oru, is that uh, in the book of uh, Psalms 1037, the Bible says that uh, Moses knew God's way. He made, God made known his ways to Moses mm -hmm. and his acts to the children of Israel. Yes. And that is a very key. Do you just know God's acts mm -hmm. or do you know his ways? Mm -hmm. Because here we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. They are facing death. Mm -hmm. They are facing death by being thrown into the fire. But they know God's ways. Mm -hmm. They, they are not looking at the acts to decide, is this God or is it not God? Because some things that look like fire, like in that case, that, the, the, some things that look like destruction, maybe if you know God's way, you can see that his glory will be revealed. Yes. And we see the same thing with, with the, uh, the man who was bride. And the people come to Jesus and they are expecting him to be healed. And they ask Jesus, who sinned? Mm -hmm. The parents or wh why is he bright? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, uh, that's not the issue here. The issue is this man is bright, but he's bright so that the glory of God can be revealed. The, the issue here is, 
you are in that situation right now. So don't ask. Sometimes, yes, it's good to ask, what door did I open? But now that this situation is here, this is something that I really like for you to ask. I, I got this from one man of God. Now that this situation is here, God, what do you want to be for me that you could not have been at any other time? If Chadrach and Meshach and Abednego did not stand their ground at that time, we could not have known the God who is a deliverer. Yes. It is because they stood when the fire was coming that they were able to experience the deliverer. Yes. It is because Daniel stood when he was thrown into the lion's den that we were able to know, to have a revelation of God being a deliverer too. God who can, uh, who can uh, just do what is, the, the lions were hungry. Mm -hmm. It's not that like the lions were full. Because, so we know that in, um, supernaturally, God was able to go beyond what, was na what is natural and do something which was supernatural. And so that is the question that I want to ask you. The situation that you are going through, the situation that you are in right now, what is it that you can do? How is it that you can be able to walk and work in that so that you can see God in it? Are you just looking at the act and trying to decide whether it is God or not? Or do you know God's ways where he's a healer, where he's a deliverer, where he can set you free, where he's, he's the almighty God? Do you know God as that? Or how do you know God? And so however you know God, know him after the word. Know him as after his faithfulness. Go into the word and see what other people went through. And because of that, you'll be able to stand in your situation. Yes, you'll be able to stand in your situation when you really know God. That is what um, Paul said. Paul asked that he may know him. Despite that, he knows God. He's still asking that I may know you. Moses said, show me your glory. David said, teach me your ways. It's good to really know God. And the story I really like in the Bible is about Joseph. He had so much spent time, presence with the Lord that everywhere where he succeeded, it was shown that the presence of the Lord was with him. Mm. That's why he prospered wherever he went. In the pit, in the jail, even in, um, in the house of Potiphar, whereby they lied at him, the, his brothers took his coats of many colors, Potiphar's wife took his shirt, but at the end of the day, at the end of the story, he went from the prison to the palace. Even Pharaoh was able to say that I know that surely the spirit of God is in this person. Are we spent time enough with God, whereby he robs on us? When you spend a lot of time in the presence of God, it rubs on you so much so that wherever you go, you release heaven, you release the kingdom. Whatever is not allowed in heaven will not be allowed wherever you go. And you up now be an atmosphere changer, change the situation by you spending time in the presence of the Lord. That's why Jesus said, Mary is doing the only one thing, one thing that is required, sitting by my feet. But matter, even though it's good to run around, but before we do all those daily running around, it is proper to spend time in the Lord. Yeah, because yeah, that's the only way that we can get to know him. Because if, uh, I, I, I just feel like God is speaking to those people who wait until Sunday. And, and that's the only time that they get to be fed. And, and I, I felt like God uh, was asking, uh, what if you ate the same way in our natural bodies? What if we just ate one meal on Sunday? Whatever was served there at the church, that's the only time we ate. And all during the week, we didn't eat. But just as we feed our natural bodies, it's the same way. We, we need to feed our spiritual bodies. We need to spend time with God. Because how, can, how else can we know him? There's no other way to know him other than spending time in his word and spending time talking to him. Husbands and wife, you know so well that the only way that you can get to know your, your wife or your husband to know each other is to spend time with each other. 
And you, you very well know that the moment the, the communication, there's a communication breakdown, maybe one person is saying one time, or oh, there's no time to communicate, that marriage starts getting on the rocks. That marriage starts, um, the, the, these issues that arise. And so just as a normal marriage where you, you come back, you communicate, you start talking to each other, you see uh, from the other person's perspective, it is the same thing. We spend time in God's word. You know, uh, some people just take the Bible and read maybe a chapter a day and say, oh, yeah, I spent time with God. But for you to get the meat of the word, you have to, like what we were saying, you have to ask revelation from the Holy Spirit. You have to spend and time musing and meditating on the word, just thinking through that word, taking it through, the, through your mind time and time again until you get the deeper revelation of it. Because the moment you get that deeper revelation of who God is, then you'll be able to stand on your trials. You'll be able to stand against anything else that would come your way. You'll be able to stand your ground if you, uh, if, uh, if you spend time, if you spend time, quality time in the word. Yes, the Bible in Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then, when you meditate on the word of God, when you keep staying on it day and night, then, shall, then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. So in order for us to be successful, we have to meditate. This is a book of instruction of life. There's no situation that can come against us. There's nothing we are going through that the solution is not in this word of God. So it's good to meditate, hear God, reading the word, and stay, have a personal encounter, relationship, talking to God and listening to what he has to say to you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your presence and your glory to those that are watching. And we come into agreement over every person who is sick, every person who is experiencing sickness, every marriage, every kid who has run away from home, every person who is seeking their destiny. Father, we touch and agree and we come into agreement that you are faithful. And Father, as they have st stood, as they have asked, for you to touch their situation. I call for divine turnaround in those situations, even right now, in the name of Jesus. I declare over that situation that with God, nothing is impossible. And so, blessings to you, and I believe, and believe with me, that with God, nothing is impossible, and your situation is going to turn around. So, uh, thank you, Pastor Oro, for being with us. And until we meet next time, may the blessings of God be upon you. May he increase you and continue having faith in him because he's faithful, he's true, and he is good.